أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المأسومين المظلومين وصلى الله عليك يا سيد ويا مولاي يا حجة الله يا ابن الحسن يا صاحب الأصر والزمان اللهم صل على محمد يقول في دعاء الأحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اجعلني من أنصاره وعوانه والضابين عنه والمصارعين إليه في قضاء حوائجه والممتثلين لأوامره والمحامين عنه والسابقين إلى إرادته والمستشهدين بين يدي We start by sending our salutations, our blessings and our peace upon Muhammad the Nabi to Muhammad to Mahdi with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad my dearest elders, my fellow sisters and brothers in Islam and indeed in humanity, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. The dua or the extract from the dua that I just recited comes from dua al Ahd. A dua narrated to us by our holy sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And it, is, it is, and it has been said that if a mu'mineen recites this dua after their Salatul Fajr prayer for 40 consecutive days, they will be granted the opportunity to meet with the Imam of our time. The power of this dua is something that we need to fully comprehend and understand. And the part that I recited translates to, O oh Allah, appoint me among his helpers, referring to Imam Mahdi. His helpers aids and his protectors those who hasten to fulfill his commands and obey his orders those who are his supporters and compete with each other to fulfill his intention and seek martyrdom in his presence now it's all well and good for us to observe this dua as much as we can especially on the friday mornings but it's even more crucial to us to try and apply some of the practical steps to help us reach the Imam. For example, there's a famous Arabic proverb where it says, have faith in Allah, but still tie up your camel. Meaning, if you wish your camel to stay where you've left it, yes, you can, Allah, yes, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it to stay there, but you still need to go through that practical step of tying it up. And the same applies here. We can recite this dua for 40 days straight, but if after that dua we are then sinning and sinning and sinning and disobeying Allah and missing the rest of our prayers, are we really going to have that opportunity to meet with the Imam? And it's important for us to take this a step further and try and analyze, okay, I have my wajibat covered, now what else must I do or what else do I need to do to ensure I get that moment to meet with my Imam? And inshallah, today we will cover a few of the characteristics, the attributes that are required as per the hadith from our imma alayhim wa afdhul salatu was salam in order to serve the awaited. And before we start on these four points, may I please request a salawat in remembrance of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. In history from our 14 holy ma'asumeen, there are two Imams who are frequently narrating, or we have narrations from them about the Imam. And these are our fifth and sixth Imams, peace be upon them both. The general reasoning for this is predominantly due to, is predominantly due to their political situation, in that they had the ability to speak out somewhat freely compared to their former Imams and the latter Imams. And thus we have many a hadith from Bihar al-Anwar and many of, our, uh, many of our other books with their hadith and narrations about this fantastic personality and how we can try and ensure that we are part of his army. And the first that I wish to address to you was narrated by Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And 
it's to do with worship and devotion. Two things that we hear so regularly in our majalis and in our lectures. Ensure that your salah is impeccable. Ensure that your wajibat are perfected. Ensure that you have that devotion and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For for everything that we do in this life, it's for Him and no one else. We serve the Ahlul Bayt because as a result, we get to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make our parents happy. Why? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. We serve the community. Why? To ensure that they are happier and it could possibly lead to them thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every action that we do is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. And thus Imam tells us in describing the supporters of Al-Mahdi, he says that they keep regular vigils and spend the night standing in worship. During their prayers, their silent supplications are like the buzz of honeybees. They mount their horses during the day and, and carry out their performances in terms of their duties. They are worshippers at night and lions during the day and on account of the fear of God, they are in a particular state. And this is taken from Bihar on Anwar, volume 52 and page 308. So what we find here is this emphasis from Imam about that crucial and essential valuable prayer. And Imam specifically says that their silent supplications are like that of the buzz of the honeybees. And as the Shia, every Muharram we hear the story of Ashura, the history, the tragedy of this tragic event. And we recall that moment on the night of Ashura where the companions and the family of Muhammad are there in the tents. And the narrations describe it as what? As a buzz of honeybees with their prayers. And Imam refers to this exactly the same way as the, as the narrations refer to that sequence of events. So this is a sign for us. How? In that Imam al Hussein had to bring an army together to serve him. He had to bring people to come to him that were certain in their conviction for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment and the Rasul so much so that he could then defeat the tyrannical leader of Yazid and ensure the message of Islam remained. Yet he could only find how many? 72, including his family. And this just goes to show how hard it's going to be for the Imam of our time to try and find 313 generals within his army. Yet the same still applies. The same attributes that Hussein, Imam Hussein's companions had, the same attributes that Imam al-Hujjah will need to have within his army. So Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq tells us about this worship and devotion. And one way that we can try to, if you like, better our prayer, better our dhikr of Allah, I have one potential plus point or advice that I could give, and this is regarding the tasbih of our dear lady Fatima al Zahra, salam Allahi alayha. This was known as one of the best gifts that was given by Rasulullah to his beloved daughter. Now it's all well and good after Salatul Maghrib tonight, racing the person next to you to get through your beads. But what's really the essence behind this? How can we get to that level of the buzz? How can we ensure that we receive that devotion from Allah and we devote ourselves to Allah? Well, firstly, when we recite 34 times Allahu Akbar, we are proclaiming the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So think about His Majesty. Think about his titles, how forgiving, how loving, how caring, how forgiving. The list goes on and on. We have 99 names that are commonly known to us. And we also have Dua Josh and Kabir where there are a thousand in there. So think about each of Allah's traits as you take through your Allahu Akbar. The second, we say Alhamdulillah 33 times. Now for this, what can we think of? We can think about thanking Allah for the house that he's given us the warmth in the clothes that he has given us, our families, our friends, the majalis we can have here without having government authorities coming in and trying to dispel our majalis. And again, the list goes on. And then finally, we come to subhanAllah, glorification be unto Allah. And that's something more physical, if you like. Seeing the Niagara Falls and saying, subhanAllah, look at one of Allah's creations. Look at the moon, look how it emulates Abu Fadha Abbas. Look at that creation. 
Look at the trees, look how they wave, look at the greenness, the list goes on. So this is just one small step that perhaps we can take if we haven't already to try and better our dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abide by the condition or the criteria or even the attribute that Imam al-Sadiq tells us to ensure that we, ta- that we have our worship and devotion perfected. And inshallah, before we move to the next, salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The second again comes from our holy sixth Imam and this is to do with the love for our Imam and the obedience towards him. Our conviction, our ability for when he comes down upon this earth and says to person X, we'll name person X Hassan, when he says to Hassan, oh Hassan, go and do this for me, he goes. There's no stall in his action. Why? Because he has that conviction with Imam. Whatever Imam says he knows is the ultimate truth. He knows that is word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he must do it to abide by that. And that is the conviction and the obedience and the love we must have for our Imam. But Imam al-Sadiq says, In describing the supporters of Al-Mahdi that he has men whose hearts will seem to be as if they were from pieces of iron. They are more obedient to the Imam than a slave girl is in relation to her master and owner and they are subservient to his command. Again from Baharun Anwar. Now when we think about this simile that Imam has used, he has compared it to a slave girl to their master. And when we think back to the Arab times, this was a huge thing. Many a family had slave girls now known as servants, if you like. And the obedience to their masters was so crucial. Why? Because their pay depended on it. Their family's livelihoods depended on it. And this needs to be the same in that when Imam tells us that's our dunya, that's our akhirah, and that's our forever depending upon it. That's everything. That's the be all and end all and that's the seal. And this is what Imam tells us. Equally, this love, how can we build it up with our Imam? Sayyid Razawi many a time mentioned in his lectures on Thursday nights and he says, how many of us here in the room and tomorrow morning will be yearning for his reappearance? Just like when we were opening our exam results last year or this year and that night before that level of prayer just goes up that little bit more. Similarly, we know that Friday is the day that he'll come. We say in the dua after Jum'ah that this is, this is the truth that you will arrive on this day. Therefore, on that night and in the morning, we should be eagerly anticipating, hoping, praying and wishing that Imam will be coming on this day. Because it's about time we think in our minds that he serves the world and does what we know he will do, which is to bring justice back to this earth. And if we don't have that connection and that conviction, then we're not living up to the traits and attributes that Imam has told us to, should we wish to be part of this army. And it's something to reflect upon, that on that Thursday night, and I say this to myself before anyone else, on that Thursday night and Friday morning, how many of us really spend that moment to say to Imam, and when you say salam, he has to reply, remember. So he listens. How many of us take that moment to say salam to our Imam, to read the du'as for the Friday, to read du'a al-ahad, and to really pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send him to us? Maybe that's something we can try tonight, tomorrow morning. Maybe it's something we can all, inshallah, do. So the first that we covered was worship and devotion towards Allah. The second was the love of the Imam and obedience to him. And before we move to the third, Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The third, and this one is narrated by our holy fifth Imam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Where Imam al Bakr mentions, and again somewhat emphasizes the previous points regarding beloved soldiers of Imam having an impact. I'll read the quote first because it kind of sets what Imam is trying to say better than me trying to summarize it, of course. And he says, it is as if I can see the supporters of Al-Mahdi dominating heaven 
and earth, and there is nothing in the world that would not be under their rule and sovereignty. Look at the power behind these words. Fierce animals and predatory birds also seek their pleasure. They will be so beloved that everywhere upon the earth will brag and boast to one another, saying that today one of the supporters of Al Mahdi dropped in and passed by here. And this is narrated in three of our books. Again, if you wish to, for, if you wish to find out these, uh, where the references are, just see me after. So Imam is really emphasizing this point that us as the Shia of Ali and ending with Mahdi, that we need to ensure that in every mannerism that we conduct within our community, be it at home, be it at school, in university, in the workplace, that we are identified as someone special. We don't do it for the intention of that. But it's just how it eventually comes across in that these people think when we leave the office or the lecture, wow, what a man, what a woman. I wonder what they're about. And that's where that connection eventually comes in. And the part that really strikes the heart in this narration is where it says that today, one of the supporters of Al Mahdi dropped in and passed by here. And when I initially read through this in my research, it really just clicked a hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam that we all commonly know, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Where the commander of the faithful says to us, live amongst people in such a manner that if you die, they weep over you. And if you are alive, they crave for your company. Look how they interlink. Look how that message of Ali Muhammad continues to go through step by step, imam by imam. And there's no differentiation with what they try to tell us. It's all consistent. It's all the same. So when we leave the workplace or the university or school, let's ensure there is one mannerism that we are known for. Let's ensure that we are known for the guy that picks up the litter after someone else. Why? Doesn't matter. We do it. Why? To serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's just try and be that person who when they see someone upset, they try to raise their spirits a little bit. For it's sunnah to smile. It's true. And let's try and be one of those people that when someone has unfortunately passed away, be it a friend or even someone you know directly, Try and be the first one there to that burial, to that salah. That emotional connection that you can gain is something that's not experienced until you leave this world and people then look back and say, wow, what a man. Look what he was known for. He wasn't known for his love of Watford FC. He was known for something else. He wasn't known for this and that. He was known for his recitation of Quran, his akhlaq. So the first that we covered was worship and devotion towards Allah. The second was the love and the obedience to our Imam. The third being amongst his beloved soldiers and, and ensuring that when Imam is looking for his supporters, we don't even need to ask him, I say this in inverted commas, rather he looks at us and says, I want him on board with me. Let him be proud of us. So when he receives our deeds every week, he says, what a man. He is a true follower of me and he will definitely deserve a place in my army. And before we move to the fourth, salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Finally, in terms of the four attributes that I wish to cover today, of which online there are actually 24 on, on alislam.org. Again, I'll send you the link if you require. But this last one will strike a word that in current day news electrifies hearts a little bit, and that's martyrdom. The lovers of martyrdom, those who have no fear of death, the only fear that they have is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't fear the fact that they'll end up in a box or in mud six feet under with the same clothes as the person next to him. It doesn't matter. For they know that they've now gone that step further to meet their creator, to meet the Rasul and to meet his successor and the A'imma. And the Imam al-Sadiq tells us, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. That one of the attributes of the supporters of the Mahdi, the people that will gain amongst his ranks, is that they have an intense fear of God. And they aspire for martyrdom. Their aspiration is to be slain in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And this slogan is O oh, Avengers of Hussein alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. As they move, they fear and dread of them in the hearts of their enemies. Move within the distance of one month's travel. And to me, when I read this out, O oh, Avengers of Hussein, O oh, someone who sends away the enemies, O oh, one who has fear of Allah, I think to none other than Abu Fadl Abbas. The way Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alam. The way in Karbala where he would walk through that battlefield and there is a famous Latmiya that's recited by Bas in Karbala'i where he says to them, O oh people, if I wish to reach that river, I will. I will. I will do it for the love for the beloved ribcage of my dear stepmother. Abu Fadl Abbas marches through those battlefield, marches through that battlefield for one reason, ultimately to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to defend the name of Islam which was being held by Hussein ibn Ali. And this is exactly what Imam al-Sadiq represents and tells us. And as I made that comparison earlier, whereby the 72 companions, the buzzing in the tents, this is the same kind of thing, in that we find another example in Karbala, where we can find this love for martyrdom, not love for unnecessary martyrdom. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Not love for unnecessary martyrdom, but for when it's called upon. When Imam comes to you and says, O oh person X, O oh Hassan, go and do this now. And eventually it will get to that point where he'll say, O oh Hassan, now's your time. Now's your time to show me that you are truly a Shia of mine and that you are here to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to defend the banner of the Islamic faith. And this is even reiterated in the Holy Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the chapter of the cow, surah number two, verse number one, five, four, he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَا تَقُولُ لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتٌ بَلْ which translates to and say not of those who are killed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are dead nay they are living but you don't perceive it and this is, this is, this is the exact mentality that we need to have that when we have that opportunity to give our life as per the order of the Imam in the way of Islam that we do not have that hesitation we have that conviction in the Imam. We have that worship and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we fear him but forever will praise him. We'll recite our poetry as we get struck in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then also we'll be part of those who when we leave this world people will hold majalis in remembrance of those people. All the attributes of Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Bakhir that they give to us to be part of the army that will insha'Allah bring back justice on this earth. Salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. As we look around the world now, it's with a heavy heart and it's with tearful eyes that we see the state of Syria. Where us as the Shia of Ali cannot even visit his daughter. Where before it used to be a yearly, seasonly thing for us. Where we can't even go to Iraq, to Baghdad, especially to Samarra, without taxi drivers saying to us, Brother, are you sure you wish to go? For you may not return back from this journey. Such is the state that we live in today. But it's not even just where the shrines are kept of our holy infallibles. But it is also in the land of Pakistan, in Bahrain, in Saudi Arabia, the list goes on. And one of the Imam's traits that he will have is that he will not have any discrimination against race. Therefore, we need to ensure that we emulate that, that we stand on the same grounds of him. And when he says, O oh person X, O oh Hassan, I need you to partner up with this man from Saudi, we have no problems. For he is the Shia of Ali. He has been elected by the Imam. So why should we have a problem? Because we are all fundamentally the Shia of Ali at the end of the day. And whilst I say that, my mind casts back to just earlier this year, where one of the best poets to have ever graced this earth, forget even in the Shia world, 
but in humanity worldwide. A professor in Pakistan, Shaheed Sibti Jafar, on that note, can please recite Surah Fatiha for his soul before I continue? Where Shaheed Sibti Jafar, he gave one of the best poems ever, ever, that you'll ever come across. And it's entitled Jab Imam Ayenge. Many of us will know it here. I myself don't speak Urdu, so please forgive my mispronunciation of this stanza. But it just stuck out. It just shined there for me. And he says, and Jab Imam Ayenge, for those who don't know, means when the arrival of the Imam, when the Imam comes. And he says, Dawa e Muhabbat jo sub o sham karte hai. Unke dushmeno se bhi ra o rasam rakhte hai. Khums bhi nahi de te ghi batain bhi karte hai. Momino se bildi min buz e khuna rakhte hai. Kis tarhan nibhayenge jab imam ayenge. And this means what? He says we talk about love day and night. Referring to imam. We talk about his love day and night. Even with his enemies... We still keep our relations. We don't even give our khums. And we continue to do our ghiba. In our hearts, we even have hatred for our fellow believers. How will we fulfill our duty when the Imam eventually comes? And this is something so pertinent to today. Whereby it's all well and good getting on our prayer mats. Conducting all our Islamic rituals, but if we're still missing those fundamentals that are prescribed in the Quran, Surah 49, ayah number 12, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states to us that backbiting is like eating the flesh of your own dead brother. If we're still doing that, will Imam be the one to choose us? Will Imam want to be will Imam want to have to deal with myself bickering about his own followers within the army? Causing an upheaval, maybe this is why he still is waiting for his 313 within his army. So I end by giving maybe some pointers that our community, Shia worldwide, can take forward in light of the ahadith from our holy fifth imams, Imam al Bakr and Imam al Sadiq, our sixth Imam, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma and the first is try to develop different methods of recitation to ensure that they, they are, that they are that much more in focus and will help us get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm talking of Quran and dua especially. Alhamdulillah, we have the screens now whereby in dua we have the translation on there which has taken our levels that much higher. For now we can understand every word that's uttered. But it's time to think of the new idea, the new level, the one that will take us that much higher. The second is to ensure that we as a community and we as the Shia are ready to host our leader, our awaited saviour for upon his arrival. We need to ensure that we boost our connection with him further. Again, after ziyara, it's become a fantastic habit that we do the dua al-faraj, our anthem, if you like, for the Shia. But let's take it to the next level. Let's not just leave dua al-ahad for those morning prayers, let's leave it for whenever we can. Let's try and get it in our lives as much as possible as a community. Thirdly, is to attempt to emulate those mannerisms of Ali Muhammad. As we mentioned earlier, where Imam al bakhir was saying that this was an area where one of the followers of, Mahdi, of the Mahdi passed through, we wish to be amongst those who can try and emulate those perfect mannerisms as set out by Ali Muhammad. And as a community, we need to ensure that no matter who our neighbours or the people that we live around are, that we embrace them, that we, that we bring them together, and eventually they will see the light. It's a guarantee because that light will never fade. That light of Ali Muhammad is always there for any believer and for any non-believer. So we need to ensure as a community we're there with open hands, regardless of race, religion, or even background, and ensure we can try and bring them to the path of Ali Muhammad. And finally, is to be sure that we are 100% ready to give whatever Imam demands from us. When he says do this, we do it. There's no stall, there's no hesitation. Our conviction needs to be such 
that eventually when the message comes saying the Imam has arrived, all those who are baligh now need to head to land X, our family shouldn't be stopping us. Our whole families, our partners, our parents, our sons, our daughters, our cousins, our aunts and uncles need to have that conviction that they can say goodbye to us. Why? Because they know they'll see us in the next life when we are part of the shuhada amongst Hussein and Ali Muhammad. Thank you very much for listening and inshallah we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he alleviates all the suffering across the world, that he lets us be part of the Imam al-Mahdi's army. Wa akhir al-da'wan wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.